join me at the Pine Bluff Rotary Clubs, all to order. We do have several, several uh, visitors with us today. Uh, leadership Pine Bluff, we surely appreciate you being here. If you could stand so uh, the clubs could recognize you, please. Please pick up your member application on the way out of the door. <laughs> Charles will have them waiting. Nope, not, not Roy, Charles. <laughs> we also do have some distinguished guests with us today sitting at our head table. I'd like to take this time real quick to recognize them. Uh, starting on my far left, Senator Ken, I'm sorry, State Representative Ken Ferguson. Uh, Pine Bluff Mayor, the Honorable Debbie Collingsworth. Dr. Arthur L. Hunt, Jr., who will be our speaker, and uh, Reverend Turner will be introducing him later. Of course, Reverend Jesse Turner, here on my left. And on my right, uh, the Reverend Leon Jones, Sr. Shannon, you get no introduction. <laughs> Just a couple quick announcements for our club, for uh, the Pine Bluff uh, Downtown Rotary Club. Check your emails later on today, please. We still have a dictionary project that we still need to complete. We do have some schools that are still available for, uh, for delivery of our dictionaries. Please check your email. Also, for both clubs, not next week, but the following week, the 26th of this month, which will be the last Tuesday of the month, we will have another joint meeting. It will be Farmers Appreciation Day. Please make plans to attend. We, we do have the Arkansas Secretary of Agriculture, Wes Ward, coming down to speak to us. So we would love to have uh, all of you back. Uh, this is, I think, the way Rotary should look every week. So thank you all for being here. Uh, at this time, I'm going to turn it over to, uh, to President Shan Smith. Yes, my name again is Shan Smith. I'm the President of the West Palm Bluff Club, and I'd like to thank all of y'all for show, coming today and hearing this wonderful message we have today. Uh, I'd like to warn y'all, uh, as Leadership Pine Bluff, watch your hand, you'll end up being here with me. <laughs> if, do we have any uh, special guests, Roy? I know that just my son is out there that visiting. No? Okay. Uh, one just got one quick announcement. I am still hunting for sponsorships and a <clears throat> member of the Pine Bluff Club to come join the Polar Bear Plunge with me this oh, time. So uh, I'll either take your money or take your... Charles McGee? Okay. All right. I will put him down. Uh, next week, our speaker will be State Representative Vivian Flowers. She'll be coming in. Uh, for all y'all board members out here, remember we do have a 1 o'clock board meeting next Thursday. At this time, it's my pleasure to introduce Reverend Jesse Turner of the West Pine Bluff Rotary Club. We say good afternoon to everyone. We are uh, just excited to be here today. I uh, want to, first of all, call uh, our state representative up because he said he had something for me. So I'm going to ask him if he would come and uh, can we have that right now. Good afternoon to everybody. Thank you for this invitation. Thank you, Reverend Turner, for allowing me to come to be a part of uh, this uh, uh, organization, this opportunity. As my pastor would say before he gets up to preach, <laughs> he, he tell everybody, he said, I, I won't be long. Now, I'm not going to get up to preach, but I'm not going to be long. Uh, we're going to get right into this as we sort of commemorate the contributions of Dr. Martin Luther King and the good work that uh, Reverend Turner is doing. Uh, this is a citation. Yeah. Whereas the National Alliance of Faith and Justice founded Justice Sunday to honor the role of Dr. Martin Luther King as a clergy and drum major for justice and to commemorate the spirit and the selfless acts of thousands of diverse faith and community volunteers who fought and continue to preserve human dignity and the quest for social change. Whereas the National Observance of Justice Sunday on January 17th, 2016, offers a benchmark to launch or renew efforts to build mutual respect and pledge to work together to ensure all children retain and maximize access to education 
and whereas the House of Representatives of the 90th General Assembly of the State of Arkansas take great pride in recognizing Justice Sunday as a national day of recruitment for caring adults and tutors to help youth to reach their full, full, uh, full potential. And therefore, pursuant to the motion of your student, Representative Kenneth B. Ferguson, Representative Vivian Flowers, and Representative Michael Holcomb, the Arkansas House of Representatives directs that this citation be presented on the 12th day of January 2016. Appreciate you so much for your service. Thank you. We thank our delegation very much and especially you can for this uh, citation. My job also is to introduce our speaker for today. Uh, our speaker, and, and this is, I believe, our tenth time coming together with both Rotary Cubs to kick off the King Fest activity for this uh, Martin Luther King week. And so we're just happy that both of you all saw fit to come together, that uh, we could open up uh, the celebration and remembering the legacy of Dr. King uh, together because he was about service. It's service above self is what the Rotaries are about. So I want to introduce to you a young man that uh, I know I've been working with for some time, uh, Arthur L. Hunt, Jr. is an ordained minister, pastor, preacher, family man, Highly skilled in the business of ministry is he. Highly skilled in the business of education. Highly skilled in the business of music and the creative economy. He is senior pastor of the Hunt Memorial Cathedral of Faith and founder and CEO of the College of Aspiring Artists. Mr. Hunt, Dr. Hunt, if I can call him that, is an alumnus of the University of Arkansas at Fayetteville. And he is also very well versed in marketing. He's done work for CBS and ABC. Uh, and today we are in for a treat. He is a hard worker. He is one that is that is going above and beyond the call of duty when it comes to remembering the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. So today, if you will, give him a great Rotarian welcome. Well, it is a beautiful day, and God is in control. So today we stand here with great honor. Uh, first, to God our Father, and to all the people who are doing His work. Uh, my assignment today is probably a, a three-part uh, agenda. The first thing I want to do under the umbrella of honoring God is to honor God's people. And I want to thank Reverend Turner for uh, his hard work, but mostly his heart work. The hard work is what we need today in uh, making sure that love, which is at an all-time low, has a stimulus opportunity. 48 years ago, April 3rd, April 4th, we remember the last moments of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. It took 18 years. Uh, the late Mrs. King, Harry Belafonte, Congressman Conyers and many others. They gave great sacrifice, 18 years from 68, until the president would sign the legislation, it would become a federal holiday in 1986. We're preparing to celebrate the observance of 30 years. Tonight, we'll hear from the president. Tonight, we'll hear from a governor 
in South Carolina. And so your moments today are historic and they are no worthy. National Mentoring Month is very, very important. Reverend Dr. King has spent a lot of time, spent a lot of time preaching the Word of God, teaching the Word of God, and mentoring God's people. In his day and our day, those principles, those teachings are relevant. Reverend Turner, he is such a kind man, and uh, I didn't tell him in a formal sense, but today I want to give honor to whom honor is due. Uh, he has become a mentor to me. Uh, he's been uh, very kind to share wisdom and knowledge, and I value that. I remember 26 years ago in Memphis, I did the first national tribute honoring Reverend Dr. King at the Orpheum Theater. After I did the tribute, the King family were not interested in coming to Memphis. We can understand why. But they saw a tribute that was worthy of the son, Martin Luther King III, coming to Memphis. We honored that family because today that family has many concerns based on the life that they live every day. They need our prayers. They need our love. And so the second year, as I was preparing and Martin Luther King III came, I was fortunate to meet the founder of the National Civil Rights Museum. I had worked in marketing, and he was a man that I met, the late, the Honorable Judge of the Army Bailey. He died last year. And he said to me, Arthur, you've been doing the King Holiday in Memphis before we opened it, the National Civil Rights Museum. Would you do the opening tribute? And so I saw a lot of things over the past 25 years, understanding the spirit of a dreamer, the spirit of one who really has the greater love. And the greater love, as we hear and read in the biblical records, is one who is willing to lay down their lives for a friend. No, it doesn't mean we have to take a bullet, but sometimes we have to put our reputation on the line and say, I'm with that person or I'm with that group. The Rotarians understand how important it is to have brotherly love, but most importantly, let brotherly love continue. So my first assignment today in Pine Bluff as I look around and understand the demographics and the dynamics of what's going on, there are very positive things that we can attest to. And so I want to pronounce honor these at the head table. Those of you who are uh, Rotarians in business, ministerial, those of you who are aspiring and who are on your way to greatness, honor is very important. And so I honor Reverend Turner as I look at what's happening in Pine Bluff. My father, who would uh, be 85 years old, the late Dr. A.L. Hunt. I hear Pine Bluff had a murder, someone 85 years old. That's a concern. I heard a young girl was murdered. That's a concern. Are we our brothers and sisters keepers? Well, that's a good question to ponder. The first thing I wanted to do was to honor this leader, Pine Bluff. I see interested citizens, voter registration. Did I get it right? Yeah. Well, thank you. Sometimes I have to check myself. <laughs> this is a very important agenda, and I heard some of the names of the people who were represented. You know, the first word after Pine Bluff is that interested word. Before I register for anything, I want to let everybody know that there must be some interest. We got some candidates, we got some officials who are sometimes doing a good job holding our interest. But I submit to you in this movement, it's very important to look at that process. Uh, who has the interest? Who has a strategy to help God's people as we model Reverend Dr. King? You know, in the creative economy, I always like to do some creative work as a preacher. My dad said to me, he said, son, how can you tell if a person's a preacher or not? 
I said, Dad, I don't know. He's been preaching a long time. His dad was a preacher, my grandfather. I said, how, how can you tell? He says, well, if they can keep from preaching. So uh, I said, that's good, Dad. And a few years later, I said, well, I finally figured it out. If you're preaching, you're going to have to preach. So I came back to my land. I was working for record companies. I said, Dad, I got it figured out. I said, it's kind of like if you have a dog and the dog barks, you should expect the bow wow. If you got a pig, you should expect an oink. A cat will be out. Anytime you get a preacher around, so if they start preaching, you know, you shouldn't be shocked because that's what preachers do. And so uh, when you think about creativity in the preachers, I said, God, I would like to uh, ask the question, if Reverend Dr. King was here today, you know, what would he see? What would he say? What would he do? And what would he pray? And so sometimes preachers can get to heaven and get a message from God. And so I wanted to see what, what Reverend Dr. King say today, and, and I think I found a way to hear it uh, and get a message. Uh, can I share it with you just briefly? I still have a dream. America, tell me what has happened to our love. One nation under God, we the people. Can there be a day, a federal holiday, we unite in brotherly love one day to give honor to God and the keepers of the faith a holy day. Give us this day a day of love that overcomes hate. Preachers, are you with me? Give us this day from the Little Rock Nine to the Carolina Nine ensuring that their sacrifices will not be in vain. Give us this day, a historic day, where hundreds and thousands of clergy, state leaders, youth activists, high school and college educators, students, mentors, and institutions will convene at the state capitol, proclaim and pray for the works for Arkansas, to honor this day as an exclusive celebration. Give us this day, January 18, 2016, the proclamation bracelet rally. God has spoken, the governor has spoken, so let us all unite, celebrate and feel the movement from prophecy to promise. God bless you. Presented by the Arkansas Indo-ATP. <laughs> well, you hear more than stuff in the bluff. It's coming up. So, uh, but that's a message probably uh, as important as any message that we would hear. The first thing was to honor each of you for keeping this movement, this King Fest, 32 years alive and well. Young people need to see us give honor. Because if we don't show honor and give honor, we're teaching dishonor. And we have a great need to pump up and to build up honor. Those who came before us, who gave their lives. Reverend Dr. King said it so well on that sweltering day in August, the 28th, 1963. He said he had a dream that one day multiple things would come into God's divine order. I submit to you that the second thing today is that Arkansas has to move up and we need to make the day a day that really gives honor to spiritual leadership. Give us this day is the day that Reverend Dr. King prophesied. He said he saw a day that we would come together and we would come together in the spirit of brotherhood. God has spoken this through the biblical records. The governor has spoken on January 6th and previously that there is a day that Arkansas should set aside and we should give spiritual honor, not just to Reverend Dr. King and those keepers of the faith, but to all of us who are here today who are holding up the banner of love and nonviolence and human dignity. This is the day that was spoken of. And so I submit to you that this day that's coming, January 18th, and 
Uh, Pine Bluff has a great record of a week leading up to multiple things to strengthen the fiber of this legacy. Arkansas is often you academics who understand that we come up last in so many uh, areas of education. The statisticians who can look at other parts of the nation. And here we are today, Arkansas, Mississippi, and Alabama are the three states that are yet to give the exclusive honor. I'm grateful for the life that Reverend Dr. King, the life that our governor has pronounced. And no, I'm not GOP or Democrat. If you want to know my party, I'm G-O-D. <laughs> G-O-D is God-ordained destinies. And wherever God is, that's where I want to be. This is a call for action now. And so often, many times, we look at things and say, it's fair. Oh, it's fair to do this. It's fair to do this. But is it right to do this? And the right that we're looking for is not a man-made right. Reverend Dr. King, on his final message, his prophecy, he said the greatness of America is that the right to protest for right. Yes, I've got a right, you've got a right, all God's children got a right, but just because we got a right don't mean that our right is right. Our right is not right unless it's lined, it's lined up with the biblical order. So whether we're talking about various diversities and principles and things that we want to do, I summon us to look at Reverend Dr. King today in a perspective. Humanity, yes. Civil rights, yes. But biblical rights, the biblical derivatives were the principles that he left on record to activate. So we want to join the movement. Well, it's mentoring month and I got to go. So that's the third thing. What do you say uh, about a mentor? Who is a mentor? And what does a mentor look like? And what is their major objective? Do you have to be old? Do you have to be highly educated? The story goes, there was a young boy, a Sunday afternoon, and he was eager to go outside and enjoy the playground and all the amusement in his day. And so he wanted to go outside and go to the playland, all the different parks, one in particular. So he went to his dad and said, Dad, I want to go outside and play. His dad had a busy project that he had to complete, you know how it is, the next day, Monday morning. You take the weekend off and you got to play catch up. And so his dad said, son, I'll get with you in just a moment. Uh, and just a moment, the son comes back and said, Dad, are we ready? Can we go now? Dad said, not yet, son. i got to finish this project, but I'll get back with you before it's too late. You know, here's a short while. The son is back. Dad, it's time to go. You said I'd, you, you'd be ready. Well, Dad got a little challenge. So he figured, hey, i got to keep my son occupied until I get this work done. And so he was looking at the Sunday paper. And the Sunday paper on the back of it was a picture of a map of the world. All these big countries and everything, all the geography. He says, oh, I got it. Tell you what I'll do. He gave his son the picture of the map of the world. He said, son, yeah, tell you what, as soon as you put this uh, map of the world back together, tore it into all these pieces, as soon as you put it back together, we'll go wherever you want it to go. And so he got plenty of time to get his work done. And flabbergasted in just a couple of minutes, here's the sun. Dad, here it is. What? The map of the world. Yeah, Dad, I got the picture. I got the map of the world. It's all together. And he shows it to his dad. He's put the puzzle together. And the dad looks at him and says, God, how in the world could you put all these? This is impossible. How did you do it, son? He said, Dad, it was simple. He said, you see on the back of the picture of the map of the world, it was a picture of a man. He said, I figured if I got the man right, I would get the world right. Wow. Oh, yeah. Get the man right. This is the opportunity to look at a man who got it right. This is an opportunity for us to look at ourselves and make sure that we get it right and we keep it right. So I say to you today, here in Pine Bluff, Arkansas, you are leading a great movement. Every challenge can be resolved. Every problem can be reconciled and rectified. Give us this day. Well, it comes from a prayer. It comes from a prayer. And so, preacher, what are you talking about? What did the architects of divinity have in mind? But <clears throat> well, what they wanted to do was to take a model prayer and to teach it into perpetuity. 
But when you take the word, give us this day, that utterance, it has two things, and I'll leave you with this. The first is a cry. It's a decree to God. Every day, give us this day. It's a humble cry. Because we know every good and perfect gift comes from God. And we know that God has everything. So he loves us, so we humbly say, give us this day. Whatever we need, the love, give us this day. The peace, give us this day. Our nourishment, give us this day, whatever we need. But give us this day, have a second connotation. And that connotation comes into play when people who know that they have something that God has put in their hand, and they refuse to give it and share it with somebody else. Give us this day goes from an utterance to a demand. And I say to you today that God wants us to give him everything in Arkansas. Let's make sure that the year that's here, we put God first. We want to see this movement in Pine Bluff. We really want to see the honor to the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in Pine Bluff in the state of Arkansas and nationwide. God bless you. Pray for me as we pray for Pine Bluff. Great, great, great message, great speaker. Uh, we appreciate that. Uh, if we get the man right, and the woman. <laughs> we'll, we'll get everything right in, in this country. Uh, again, we appreciate uh, him for coming and sharing with us. Uh, I know there's something I see is 1246 according to my, to my uh, watch here. And uh, before we go, I would like for uh, Reverend Jones to give us our benediction and pray us out of here. But I do want to say that as we move through the week, on tomorrow morning, we'll be at the uh, Little Theater at Pine Brook High School. Uh, we'll be doing a nonviolent pledge, a boycott against violence for the students there uh, tomorrow starting at 9.30, 9.30. Uh, and then on Thursday, we're going to be at Jack Roby Junior High School. We have uh, uh, gotten a cake where we're going to feed 623 students with a birthday cake. We're having a birthday bash. Uh, and there's a young lady that's going to speak uh, to the students as well uh, named Ashley, uh, Ashley Tate. Ashley Tate uh, will speak. And then on Friday night, we have a gospel extravaganza. Each year we have this gospel extravaganza that involves young people. We have anywhere from six to seven hundred people there and 90 plus percent of those people who are there are young folk. Young people that's singing praises to God, that's doing things that that uh, is not negative. And we have to uplift our young people. They are not all running around with their hands hanging down. Or, <laughs> Yeah, or, 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 or doing bad things, but they're doing good things. Uh, so that'll be at the New St. Hurricane Baptist Church. And then on Sunday, the group, as an organization, we're trying to help neighbor to neighbor. We ask you, uh, if you would bring a, a non spiritual item by the Donald Nunes building between the hours of 10 uh, to 2 on Saturday, uh, that we might be able to help replenish neighbor to neighbor and the Salvation Army because we know that with Thanksgiving and Christmas they have used up a lot of food. And so we're trying to use our young king team to uh, uh, give them some community service work to get uh, uh, food back into the pantry of these two organizations. And then on Sunday night we have Chris Massingale uh, who will be our speaker. He'll be at the uh, Bethany Chapel Missionary Baptist Church, 1923 uh, Olive Street. Uh, Chris is a very, very good speaker. Uh, he is chairman of the Delta Finance Regional. Regional Authority. Thank you. Delta Regional Authority. He will be our speaker for, for that night. And then on, on Monday, we have the big parade downtown. Come out and be a part of that parade, if you would. Uh, we have, we have, right now, we have over 60 participants for our parade. So we want to get everybody to come out and be a part of that. We will have the first ever 
Martin Luther King Ballad of the Bands after the parade. Pine Bluff Police Department will be serving food to something like 500 people or more. So we want to encourage all our young people to come out. And I just want to say thank you to uh, Simmons First National Bank, uh, which is one of our supporters, uh, to Reliance Bank, which is another supporter of us, uh, Jefferson Regional Medical Center, uh, the Christian, uh, Christian Way Funeral Home, uh, and there are a number of other uh, organizations that help us uh, throughout the year to do King Fest and also to provide programs for our young people. We can always use other help. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. If, if you'd like to donate to our organization, we, we'd certainly be glad. We are a 501c3 tax exempt organization and we use our funding. I don't get a salary. Uh, I do it voluntarily. I'm thanked to the railroad, but I don't get a salary except from the railroad. Uh, but if you will, we don't use your money to pay my salary. Uh, and if you will, feel free to donate something to the ICBR. We'd certainly be happy to receive it. It helps us uh, as we do the work here in the city. Again, thank you for such a great message. Thanks to the mayor for being here today. Thanks to uh, school board member, Reverend Jones. And so now I'm gonna turn it back into the hands of, of uh, one of these guys. <laughs> well, I'll be one of those guys. I'll just uh, take it from here. Thank you so much for attending today. Uh, thank you so much for, for that, that talk. It was inspiring. Thank you so much. God bless you. Uh, before we leave, we uh, will ask uh, uh, Reverend Jones if he'll come up and give us our benediction. Uh, West Pine Bluff uh, Club this week, Reverend Vivian, I mean, uh, State Representative <laughs> Vivian Flowers. Our club next week, Mary Pringus, um, will be speaking to us. Please make plans to attend. Reverend? That's great, Father. We thank you for this opportunity to fellowship one with another. Thank you for the message that we receive from the man of God. Pray your blessing, Father, that we may all have a heart of service and honor one to another. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.